بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم احمد وصلی علی رسول الکریم قال عز و جل کل صوف تعلمون ثم کل صوف تعلمون رب شہلی صدری و یسلی امری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی امین یا رب Today I'm actually for some reason very happy to discuss this lesson and uh, it's a very basic lesson but you will see it's very deep very surprising and inshallah ta'ala it will give a lot of the people that listen to this an admiration for the Quran but most importantly it's going to teach them a methodology of understanding Quran. Like how can you look at the Quran yourself and look at different ways of understanding the same verses. And uh, I will also add here a special aspect which is uh, how do we add the understanding of Islamic eschatology even though that's going to be a separate lecture inshallah one day on its own. But how can we look at the verses of the Qur'an from the perspective of Islamic eschatology or this particular, these two particular verses? Many of you will know this verse of the Qur'an and it's very basic Arabic which I will go over right now and then I will go into the discussion of this, these two verses and it's many multiple layers of different meanings inshallah ta'ala. So this is in Surah Naba'a. I just want to go over the two verses that we'll be discussing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla, surely, say'alamun, you will surely come to know. Thumma, and again, Kalla, say'alamun, but no, or yes, for sure, you will definitely come to know. Okay, so what is the significance of saying, no, you will come to know. And again, no, you will come to know. Or surely you will come to know. And again, surely you will come to know. So this is what I want to teach you today. How to look at uh, verses of the Quran like this. Where something is repeated. And how you can look at it from different perspectives. Okay. So what is it talking about? Well, if you look at the beginning of the surah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عَمَّ يَتَسَأَلُونَ What are they asking about? عَنِ النَّبَعِ الْعَظِيمِ Is it about the great event? Meaning, the Day of Judgment. الَّذِي هُمْ فِيهِ مُخْتَلِفُونَ About which they are differing with one another. About which they disagree. كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ No, they will definitely come to find out. ثُمَّ كَلَّا And again, Sayalamun, they will definitely come to know. Now, there are many aspects of grammar here that I'm not going to go over. I specifically want to focus on the different meanings of the very basic meaning of the sentence. Surely they will come to know. And again, surely they will come to know. Meaning, you will come to know the Day of Judgment. But the question is, why repeat it twice? Why say the same thing twice. What is the purpose of saying the same point twice? So this is why I want to discuss this issue in some detail today so that you can also follow along with me. One way to look at this is that it is repeating it twice because it is talking to two different groups of people. How do we determine that? Well, perhaps this surah is talking to two different groups of people. And so it is saying, as you read this surah, you will find out that it is talking to the believers, okay? And it is talking to the unbelievers, okay? And it is saying, إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ mafaza. Right, and uh, the other group before that, Inna Jahannam kanat mirsada litaghina maaba. Indeed, the hellfire is an ambush, and it is for those people that rebel a destination, 
and then inna lil muttaqina mafaza and those people who have taqwa right of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are the one that are truly victorious so one way of understanding this kalla sayalamun no you will definitely come to know just plain english understanding but knowing the different dimensions of how it may work thumma kalla sayalamun and again you will come to know so one way of looking at when something is repeating itself is that is the surah talking to more than one audience okay over here i want to set a little bit of a uh, background note and that is that we believe the quran is a book of eloquence and therefore being eloquent means to be brief and to be brief means what that you don't repeat something unnecessarily so the quran is not going to repeat itself it is against the ijaz of quran it is against the balagha of quran that the quran would repeat itself and so the quran says kalla sayalamuna thumma kalla sayalamun so it could be number 1 referring to two different audiences it's referring to one audience kalla sayalamun you will definitely come to know o believers thumma kalla sayalamun and again Oh, you who reject and question the day of judgment, which is what the surah began with, those those that are questioning one another, is it about the big news? Then it is referring to in the second time, maybe referring to the disbelievers, those that are questioning and rejecting that the day of judgment is coming. The believers will also come to know for sure. And the disbelievers will also come to know for sure. Abu Jahal will get to see, and his belief will be 100% on the Day of Judgment. Abu Lahab, Abu Jahal, Bill Clinton, uh, Bill Gates, and any other bill, their iman will be 100% on the Day of Judgment, because the reality will be before them. So one way at looking at كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ you will definitely come to know. Thumma, and again, you will definitely come to know. It is as if there are two groups of people, two crowds standing side by side, one to the right and one to the left. And you say, in an exam, for example, you say to one group, you're going to get your results. And you say to the other group, and you're also going to get your results. Okay, so this is one way to look at this verse of the Quran. Kalla sayalamuna thumma kalla sayalamun. So now we looked at this verse from the perspective of the audience, and particularly the audience within this surah. There's another aspect, kalla and surely. Or but no, sa'alamun, and you will definitely come to know. Thum and again, no, and you will come to know. So there's a you can say a negation and a confirmation twice. So what is it negating? Is there something that the surah, this surah, meaning the surah we're reading, is it telling us something in it is it is it telling us something we will come to see and to come to find out? in two different ways that people are rejecting in both those ways so what would that be so let me give you the introduction to that and that is that those people who say there's no day of judgment what do they say they also say you see this heavens and earth and mountains and stuff do you think this will start moving you think this is going to end matter is here forever Matter has been here forever, as some philosophers say. This mountain's not going to move. And so, this surah then tells you, Alam naj'alil arda mihada? Did not we make the earth a bed for you? Wal jibal awtada? And made the mountains strongly pegged into the earth. These are unmovable, unshakable entities. These same entities. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
right? وَصُيِّرَتِ الْجِبَالُ فَكَانَتْ صَرَابَ And the mountains are set in motion. And they become like a mirage, like a sirab. Okay. That today, you see the mountains still. And tomorrow, you're going to see the mountains moving. Saying you don't believe in the Day of Judgment, according to the background of the surah, has two aspects. One is that the things that you find so stable that Allah has made the earth for you to entertain you and to give to you and to provide for you and you think this is going to remain here forever and then Allah is saying these same things that you think are so stable in this world they'll be dissolving in the next world and so kalla sa'alamun thumma kalla sa'alamun no you will come to know and again no you will come to know so one methodology of trying to find the meaning of a verse or verses, especially verses that have been repeated. <laughs> These verses that are repeated, you may find a two different audiences, or if it is repeated, two different aspects of the same phenomenon, which in this case, some people said, there's no day of judgment. The other way of saying the same thing is, this earth is here, and it's these mountains are going to always be here, and they're never going to move. And Allah is saying, nope, you think there's no day of judgment, and you think these mountains are set in firmly here, and you think these mountains will not be set in motion, but that day is definitely coming. كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ No, surely they will come to know. ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ And again, they will come to know. Now, if you look at another surah of the Qur'an, let me show that to you, and that will show you in Surah Al-Takathur, similar words are used. كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ Over here, كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ And know again, you will definitely come to know. Why repeat over here also? Well, over here in this surah, another dimension is given. Number one. كَلَّا لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ If you did but know with knowledge of certainty, certainty of knowledge, لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ And you will definitely, definitely see the hellfire. ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّ حَيْنَ الْيَقِينِ And you will definitely see it with the yaqeen of your eyes. One is ilmu al-yaqeen. One level of knowledge is having, being certain in your mind this is true. One thing is seeing it. One thing is being in it. You know the North Pole exists and then another person is, knows the North Pole exists and he's flown over it, another person, he lives there. So there are three levels of knowing. And so this ayah of the Qur'an is telling us, You will come to know with, with your eyes, the certainty of your eyes. And then you will come to know by living in the hellfire. You will have haqqul yaqeen, absolute certainty. That not even your eyes are defrauding you. Not even your eyes are deceiving you. So one way or another way to read these verses when you are linking similar verses to similar verses, kalla sa'alamun, kalla sawfa ta'alamun, thumma kalla sa'alamun, thumma kalla sawfa ta'alamun. So, Soon you will come to find out. And again, soon you will come to find out. You will find out with your own eyes. And then again, you will find out when you're actually in the hellfire. And that too has been alluded to in this surah. And it has definitely been alluded to or directly mentioned in the, in the, in the surah that we read, Surah Al-Qari'ah, that you will definitely see for sure what, what is this thing that they're denying, right? 
And in this surah, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي السُّورِ فَتَأْتُونَ أَفْوَاجَ The day the trumpet will be blown and you will come out in groups. وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابَ And the heavens will be opened. You will see this, the heavens being opened into doors. It'll be, they'll become like gates that will be opened. You don't see them now, but when they're opened, you'll see it. You'll see the unseen. And so that's one way. And then the other way, what? That إِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ كَانَتْ مِرْصَادَ لِلطَّاغِينَ مَآبَ لَابِثِينَ فِيهَا أَحْقَابَ Those that, you know, the hellfire is an ambush. It is for the oppressors and destination. And لَابِثِينَ فِيهَا أَحْقَابَ And they will stay in the hellfire for a long, long, long time. They're going to be, be in the hellfire itself. It's beyond even just witnessing it. They will be experiencing it. And they will not taste in there any coolness or any drink. Right? So they'll be like getting it. Okay, they're going to taste it, smell it, see it, feel it. It's going to be all over them, the hellfire. They will, you know, be the, the, uh, the wit not just eyewitnesses, but the actual uh, victims, and the people who are the result, they will become the result of the hellfire. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ حِسَابًا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كِذَّابًا And these people, they were not anticipating that there will be any day of judgment. وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كِذَّابًا And they denied our signs completely, with complete denial. So now, we find that there is another possible explanation no, they will come to know. And again, no, they will definitely come to know even more. So there is something mahzuf here technically. They will come to know with their eyes. They'll witness the truth themselves. And they will come to know even more so by knowing that this is haqqul yaqeen, this is absolute certainty. In the same way, you can say there are two ways of knowing the Day of Judgment. Now when you look within the Qur'an and then when you also attach it to the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, to the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, then we can also see that there is two levels of knowing or two aspects of the journey of knowing one is your death where some of the unseen things are revealed and then one is being raised back up then now these are the two points where the you will know the unseen and you will then r really know the unseen for sure and you will see the phase before your result which is the grave and the Day of Judgment, and then you'll see the phase with your result, either in the hellfire or at paradise. Right? So, كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ No, they will definitely come to know. And again, they will definitely come to know as if they are experiencing it themselves. And in the first one, no, they will come to know with certainty of knowledge. Now, there's another aspect to this, which has to do with Islamic eschatology. And that is that the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to us that there are many signs of the Day of Judgment. And so, the first of those signs is the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. So the things that they were denying with the Day of Judgment, because if you deny the Day of Judgment, then you deny the signs of the Day of Judgment. And so it is possible that one can take this as كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ No, they will come to find out. When will you come to find out? You will come to find out when you look at 
the world and see the signs of the day of judgment. And if you didn't then, thumma, then again, you will definitely come to find out after you pass away. If you didn't get it in this life that this, the day of judgment is near and very much coming, if you didn't get it in this life, then you will get it in the next life. They will come to know. They will come to know. They'll see the signs. They'll see the tall buildings. They'll see all the signs of the Day of Judgment the Prophet gave us. Why do I translate this way? Because in ayah number one or in two, what are they asking one another about? Is it about the great event, meaning the Day of Judgment? But the other meaning, the other opinion, other valid opinion is, this is referring to the Qur'an. And therefore the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is it, what are they questioning one another about? Is it about the great news of prophethood? Is it about the great news that the Qur'an has been revealed? About which they are differing with one another? No, you'll definitely come to see that this is absolutely true, this Qur'an. And you will come to see that the signs of the Day of Judgment are true. And that the Day of Judgment is coming. And if you didn't get it then, then in the end you're going to find out anyhow and again, you will certainly come to find out. Okay, and so if you didn't get it, then if you didn't get it from the signs of the Day of Judgment, then you'll just have to face the Day of Judgment when it finally happens. So now, there's another aspect to this, and that is the one most of the Mufassirin have said, but all of these can be interlocked into an organic whole, and that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kalla sayalamuna thumma kalla sayalamun. No, they will come to find out, and again, no, they will definitely come to find out is being repeated twice for the sake of what emphasis to emphasize something to emphasize and make a point about something how many times do i have to repeat this allah is saying how many times do i have to say this to get to you to understand for the message to go into your head. Again, I'm repeating myself. Allah says, you will definitely come to know that there is a day of responsibility, a day of judgment, a day where you will be held responsible. Do you not find the earth as a bed for you? A place of stability for you? And don't you see the mountains that are pegged in so strongly? And don't you see how you've been made into spouses? And don't you see how we made your sleeping for rest? And don't you see we made the night as a covering? And don't you see that we made the daytime for earning a living? And we built upon you, above you seven strong heavens. And we gave you the sun that is a blazing lamp. And did we not send down from the mu'sirat, from the heavy dark clouds, when they get heavy and dark, water that is pouring in abundance. So that the fruits will come out from it. And gardens that are thick and luscious. 
inna yawm al-fasl kana miqata then don't you see that the day of judgment is appointed what is the relationship that if you don't see kalla sa'lamun no they will soon come to know you don't see the signs of allah in his creation how are you going to see the day of judgment how are you going to recognize the day of judgment kalla sa'lamun thumma kalla sa'lamun and again you will definitely come to, if you don't see the signs if you don't come to know the signs if you don't come to know the truth by the signs of allah kalla sa'lamun thumma kalla sa'lamun again you will definitely come to know if not by the signs of allah then you will come to know by your experience on the day of judgment okay so now the other meaning kalla sa'lamun no you will come to know how when you see the signs of the day of judgment the alamatu as-sa'a thumma kalla sa'lamun and then you will get to know again if you missed it you missed it but you're going to get to know then finally on the day of judgment when it is too late kalla thumma kalla sa'lamun and then again you will definitely come to know the truth okay and so what was the purpose of this lesson the purpose of this lesson was to show that there's no repetition in quran not even when allah says fa bi ayyi alai rabbikum ma tukadhiban so many so many times nope and in here also when allah repeats himself it is not for the sake of poetry or repetition but it is for the sake of emphasizing certain subtle points certain subtle issues kalla sa'lamuna thumma kalla sa'lamun no they will come to know and again they will come to know if you don't see the signs of the day of judgment if you don't see the signs at all of the heavens and the earth and if you just don't see anything in this world of reality then you will definitely come to see it all before you in the next world so kalla sa'lamuna thumma kalla sa'lamun so inshallah ta'ala i'll end here today but i hope this was beneficial for you all and giving you different dimensions of when quran repeats itself over and over again then there must be more to it than just meets the eye and so i was trying to help you see the different ways of legitimate and valid interpretations and place that before you so that that can become some of these things can become part of your thinking tools when you are studying the quran inshallah ta'ala jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh